Good afternoon. Today we have the pleasure of interviewing Professor Gururaj Sridhara, Dean of Academics at Acharya Institute of Technology. With over three decades of experience in academia, administration and passion for con conservation and the arts, Professor Gururaj is a multifaceted leader whose insights promise to inspire. Let us all enlighten our knowledge through his words of wisdom. Hearty welcome, sir. Thank you. May I proceed with the question, sir? Yeah, please. What inspired your transition from applied mathematics to academia and administration? It's a good question to answer. When uh, I was a student, I had a good number of maths teachers in the school and colleges. But my wish was to listen to somebody who is capable of uh, applying the theoretical mathematics into the actual problems of the society. So then a thought came into my mind. Uh, I, I went and approached my headmasters and principals many a time, but uh, you know they assured me, okay, we'll get a professor, we'll get a teacher from outside and all that. But that never materialized. We had to listen to the same teachers for the entire year. So then it came to my mind. Yes, if I am in the decisive position, like you know, if I'm the headmaster or if I'm the principal of some college, definitely I can bring in people from academia, from industry, from uh, scientific research centers so that mm. they can tell about uh, the intrinsic mathematical principles uh, or applied into these fields and mathematics is going to be interesting. It is not just a dull uh, mm. subject and all that, you know, we, we always think of, you know, some modern algebra, which is no more modern. It is a British era, which is still taught here. So I had my own doubts of applications of these things to the modern uh, problems. Then I decided, okay, let me become uh, the leader of the institution so that I will have enough opportunities and independence to get new phases and uh, new people from the academia wherein our students can have a proper interaction. So that was the cause. That's really fascinating, sir. Moving on to the next question. How do you integrate your passion for theater into your academic and administrative roles? Yeah, <clears throat> this theatrical uh, aspiration and, you know, the want to get into the theater started uh, when I found myself on the stages, uh, various stages for comparing and uh, interviewing people who visited the college and all. Even in the schools also, we were, uh, our headmaster used to allow me to interact with the guests. Okay, so then, you know, I thought, um, yes, if I'm good at uh, stage performances and all, uh, why can't I convert our uh, mathematical things or science things into small dramas, mm. small role plays, small quiz contests, okay, and all that. So I slowly uh, started uh, encouraging my students to do a drama on Archimedes, do a drama on uh, Newton. Even Einstein was brought onto the stage for a small amount of 15 minutes or so to explain his theory of relativity. So I wanted to incorporate uh, theater into the science and mathematics both, not just mathematics. So that led me to get into the theater seriously. And whenever I found certain students who are very skilled in performing on the stage, I employed them and I trained them. I myself directed uh, uh, so many uh, plays of uh, good writers of Canada, uh, wherein once uh, I won a Best Director Award also for that. Congratulations, sir. Thank you. And this is very creative of you to bring Einstein into theatre, sir. Following to the next question, sir. Could you please share with us a memorable experience from your time as a master trainer for teachers in Bhutan and Tanzania? Okay, so it is uh, Bhutan is a very uh, rarest of the countries which we can uh, note. You know, every country is behind uh, GDP. But uh, across the world, there is only one country which is about happiness of the citizens, that is Bhutan. Mm. So, which talks about the GNH, Gross mm. National Happiness Index. They do not worry about how much money they uh, earned uh, through their businesses, exports and imports and all that. So, when I was to teach them, they told, uh, you know, they, they, they were contemplating with the thing that, you know, our principals are unable to, uh, I train principals only, 
they were in a big uh, embarrassment that our lecturers and teachers do not listen to us correctly and perform duties then i told them uh, you can be jovial as a principal you, you, you need not be strict uh, character in the college you know whenever you are around with your professors and lecturers you can be a dramatist you can be a joke cracker okay uh, you can go to their table and sit with them and eat instead of uh, closing yourself in a closet of your own and be a happy man and be jovial so you know that was a fantastic uh, moment when they heard from me and uh, when they gave a feedback we never knew that a principal can be jovial in handling things we thought he should be strict and he should be all alone in his room Uh, call teachers uh, tell them do this do that and all that but uh, you as a principal is telling a new thing for us that we are going to practice this act so that was a great moment for me that's really inspiring sir uh the moving on to the next question sir what motivated you to establish the green defense nature club in chikmagaluru sir oh that is a good story you know when uh, I was in high school my elder brother uh, constituted a club called uh, Deccan Explorers and Mountaineers Club. Okay, so he was influenced by a Hollywood movie by name Among the Wolves. Mm-hmm. So the characters in that movie uh, always uh, climbed some rocks and uh, uh, finally they had a contentment of climbing it. So having watched that movie, I we also got inspired. So we had to go to do some adventure. when we start uh, adventuring you know then we looked around uh, the topography where we moved in like you know the forest greenery patches lands vacant lands tanks and all that so that inspired me to work with nature so fortunately i got a job in chikmagalur district as a vice principal of a residential school so there you know very next to that uh, chikmagalur uh, just 30 kilometers away there is a beautiful tiger reserve called muttodi okay our bhadra tiger reserve so where some 30 to 40 tigers still roam around and uh, i had an opportunity to interact with conservationists like dr ullas karant and dr dv girish so as a vice principal and a teacher in mathematical field they were fond of me for expressing my concern and it was out of the box for them okay being a maths guy coming into conservation means it's a big deal so they roped in me they taught me how to <clears throat> count the tigers and how to do the census of animals and all that and uh, finally it led me to okay i have got some knowledge why shouldn't i pass it on to my younger generation then i thought of uh, starting a club uh, there comes and uh, no, then came the green defense nature club it is still active in chikmagalur even though i am in bangalore i still support them they are carrying out all the conservation activities i hope this motivation uh, gets into youngsters and they also come to nature conservation that should be wonderful if that that gets passed on to the younger generation that is the need of the our actually so we have everything around us but uh, we are losing our forest patches and the climate change is uh, already hitting us in most of the areas and you know the global warming is already raising the temperature of the globe by 2.5 degrees celsius so youngsters especially the students of any college for that matter of any standard should worry about uh, conservation of uh, ecosystem that is the need of now with your words i think they'll come up sir uh, what suggestions would you like to give the youngsters of balancing multitasking like how you do yes you know youngsters will have a lot of time because they need not look after family they are only to look after themselves their studies and uh, they are growing up so just studies will bore them so they should have one or uh, 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 two uh, different hobbies it, it need not be conservation all the time it can be singing it can be dancing it can be theater it can be a good oration it can be a good writing it can be connecting to the community okay so if uh, anyone has that definitely they get inspiration from those fields and they can utilize that inspiration to go literally up into their education so it should be a passion for many things not just one student has got many opportunities because his or her education is funded by the parents he need not go and work for his uh, uh, fees and other things so then when there is lot of time you know 24 hours in a day or including the night it is a big amount of time 
even today if someone ask me to go back to a college or a school i am ready if someone funds my education or even i can fund my education if an university accepts me as a student definitely i am going to work there so students can multitask and there are a lot of opportunities and uh, today's opportunities are million you know when we were young we we never had a idea of what is uh, indian forest services mm. IFS we we call it as indian forest service that ias ips that indian forest service is different but now you know student courses are there still students are not aware of this okay. they can work for conservation systematically if they if they got a passion and uh, honesty they can work for the conservation of our natural wealth in india so a student has to have a passion towards many things not just studies this would definitely help the youngsters in handling multiple tasks effectively so i think they'll come up with more uh, ideas and uh, multitasking items that should be moving on to the next question sir could you kindly highlight one of your most rewarding moments as an educator there are uh, many moments you know i teach uh, applied mathematics in uh, uh, pre university and uh, graduate classes uh, my yester year batch students you know who i have taught 30 years back or Uh, a quarter a century back 25 years back you know whenever i meet them in hotel or a mall or a theater they wish me and they tell only one thing sir uh, you were uh, the class of integration still i remember your class of differentiation your class of set theory still i remember and that was so helpful and when in my engineering i answered a question asked by my professor he asked me back who taught you all this so perfectly so that was a great moment for me with the students coming back and telling that what i taught was very important of them and they used it to get a pat on their back so that's the finest moment of my life uh, that's really wonderful sir i think this is the best reward for any teacher or educator in the field okay. uh, so we heard that along with these many qualities like a educationalist environmentalist you are also a good writer so we would like to hear uh, uh, some uh, something you wrote yeah i uh, okay i have written seven books already which are in the market and i am a columnist in uh, prajavani and deccan herald newspapers i am not a poet uh, i mainly write on uh, science environment and education okay so i remember one quote from uh, rashtrakavi kuvempu it's not mine uh, it's in kannada avar heltare he says uh, when he talks about uh, the human existence and uh, even the common man is important he says illi yaro mukhyaralla yaro amukhyaralla that means here nobody is important and at the same time nobody is unimportant that means everything is in place and it should be in place and he says whether it is superpower or whether it is god or whether it is something which is driving us he says trunam api nachalati tenavina trunam means uh, even smallest of the small will not move unless there is one acting force on it so that acting force may be a newton's idea or an idea of einstein the science and religion and the humanity should go together that's what kuempu told us taught us and we are practicing and all our generations all our human kind definitely have to look into this statement very seriously that's it that's interesting sir We have heard from Professor Guru Raj sir. Let us all take a step forward to co- towards the conservation and the nature he is taking care of. Let us all be a part of it. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you for sharing your invaluable insights and experiences with us today. It was a great privilege to have you here, sir. I, in- I extend my gratitude once again for your valuable time, sir. Thank you so much. Thank sir. you. I am humbled and uh, I am grateful to Saint Paul's Institution and uh, the cameraman. and the interviewer have a big big future yeah, thank all the you best so much, sir.